protostar. Stars exist in eight distinct evolutionary phases, each representing a different stage in stellar development or a specific type of stellar remnant. The journey begins with protostars, the earliest form of stellar objects that have not yet achieved nuclear fusion. A protostar forms when a massive cloud of gas and dust, called a nebula, begins collapsing under its own gravitational force. This collapse occurs over hundreds of thousands of years as gravity pulls the material inward toward a central point. As the gas compresses, it heats up due to gravitational potential energy converting to thermal energy. The temperature rises from near absolute zero to several thousand degrees Kelvin. During this phase, the protostar generates light and heat purely from gravitational compression, not nuclear fusion. The object glows because the compressed gas releases energy as it falls inward. The protostar continues to contract and heat up until its core temperature reaches approximately 10 million degrees Kelvin. At this critical temperature, hydrogen nuclei move fast enough to overcome their electromagnetic repulsion and fuse together, marking the transition from protostar to main sequence star. The protostar phase typically lasts between 100,000 to 1 million years, depending on the initial mass of the collapsing gas cloud. More massive protostars heat up faster and reach fusion temperatures more quickly than smaller ones. Main Sequence Star Main sequence stars represent the longest and most stable phase of stellar evolution, where stars spend roughly 90% of their total lifetime. These stars achieve hydrostatic equilibrium, a perfect balance between the inward pull of gravity and the outward pressure created by nuclear fusion in their cores. Nuclear fusion in main sequence stars follows the proton-proton chain reaction. Four hydrogen nuclei combine through a series of steps to create one helium nucleus, releasing tremendous amounts of energy in the process. This energy travels from the core to the surface over thousands of years, eventually radiating into space as light and heat. Main sequence stars are classified into seven spectral types based on their surface, temperature, and color. O-type stars are the hottest at 25,000 to 50,000 Kelvin, appearing blue-white. B-type stars range from 10,000 to 25,000 Kelvin and appear blue. A-type stars operate between 7,500 to 10,000 Kelvin, appearing white. F-type stars run 6,000 to 7,500 Kelvin, appearing yellow-white. G-type stars, like our Sun, operate at 5,200 to 6,000 Kelvin, appearing yellow. K-type stars range from 3,700 to 5,200 Kelvin, appearing orange. M-type stars are the coolest at 2,400 to 3,700 Kelvin, appearing red. The mass of a main sequence star determines its lifetime. Massive O and B-type stars burn through their hydrogen fuel in just 10 to 100 million years due to their extreme core temperatures. Medium mass stars, like our Sun, maintain fusion for approximately 10 billion years. Low-mass M-type red dwarf stars can sustain fusion for up to 1 trillion years because their cooler cores burn fuel much more slowly. Giant Giant stars form when main-sequence stars exhaust the hydrogen fuel in their cores. As hydrogen fusion slows down, the core begins contracting under gravity while simultaneously heating up. This increased core temperature ignites hydrogen fusion in a shell surrounding the depleted core creating more energy than the star produced during its main sequence phase. The additional energy from shell burning pushes the star's outer layers outward, causing the star to expand dramatically. As these outer layers move farther from the hot core, they cool down significantly, shifting the star's color from its original hue toward red or orange. A typical giant star can expand to 10 to 100 times its original main sequence radius. Red giants represent the most common type of giant star. When our Sun becomes a red giant in approximately 5 billion years, it will expand beyond Earth's current orbit. The surface temperature drops to around 3,000 to 4,000 Kelvin, giving these stars their characteristic red appearance despite their increased luminosity. During the giant phase, stars with sufficient mass begin fusing helium in their cores through the triple alpha process. Three helium nuclei combine to form carbon, releasing energy and providing a new fuel source. This helium fusion occurs at temperatures exceeding 100 million Kelvin and creates heavier elements, including carbon and oxygen. The giant phase lasts between 100 million to 1 billion years, depending on the star's mass. 
More massive stars progress through this phase more quickly due to their higher core temperatures and faster fusion rates. Supergiant Supergiant stars represent the most massive and luminous stars in the universe. Typically containing 8 to 100 times the mass of our Sunday, these stellar behemoths form when giant stars with sufficient mass continue expanding and begin fusing progressively heavier elements in their cores. Supergiants develop a layered internal structure resembling an onion. The core fuses the heaviest elements the star can process, surrounded by shells that fuse progressively lighter elements. The innermost region fuses silicon into iron. The next shell outward fuses oxygen into silicon, followed by shells fusing carbon, helium, and hydrogen in successive layers. Red supergiants like Betelgeuse can expand to over 1,000 times the sun's radius. If Betelgeuse replaced our sun, its surface would extend beyond Jupiter's orbit. These stars maintain surface temperatures between 3,000 to 4,500 Kelvin, giving them their red coloration despite their enormous energy output. Blue supergiants represent the hottest and most luminous supergiants, with surface temperatures exceeding 20,000 Kelvin. These stars burn through their fuel extremely rapidly, often completing their entire life cycle in just 10 to 50 million years. Their intense radiation pressure can blow away significant portions of their outer layers, creating spectacular stellar winds. The supergiant phase ends when the star's core begins producing iron. Iron fusion requires more energy than it releases, so the core can no longer generate outward pressure to counteract gravity. This leads to catastrophic core collapse and triggers a supernova explosion. Neutron Star Neutron stars form from the collapsed cores of supergiants during supernova explosions. When a supergiant's iron core can no longer sustain fusion, gravity overwhelms all other forces and crushes the core in less than one second. The core collapse is so violent that protons and electrons are forced together to form neutrons, creating an object composed almost entirely of neutrons. A typical neutron star contains 1.4 to 3 times the mass of our Sun compressed into a sphere only 20 to 25 kilometers in diameter. This extreme compression creates matter density of approximately 1 billion tons per cubic centimeter. A teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh roughly 10 million tons on Earth. The surface of a neutron star consists of a crystalline lattice of atomic nuclei and electrons, forming the strongest material known in the universe. Below this crust lies a superfluid ocean of neutrons that flows without friction. The core may contain exotic matter including hyperons, kaons, and possibly quark matter that cannot exist under normal conditions. Neutron stars possess magnetic fields trillions of times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. These intense magnetic fields accelerate charged particles to near light speed, creating beams of radiation that emanate from the magnetic poles. The magnetic poles rarely align with the star's rotational axis, causing the radiation beams to sweep through space like lighthouse beams. Neutron stars rotate extremely rapidly, with periods ranging from milliseconds to several seconds. This rapid rotation results from conservation of angular momentum during core collapse, similar to how figure skaters spin faster when they pull their arms inward. Pulsar Pulsars are rapidly rotating neutron stars that emit regular pulses of electromagnetic radiation detectable from Earth. These pulses occur when the neutron star's radiation beams sweep across our line of sight as the star rotates, creating a cosmic lighthouse effect. The first pulsar was discovered in 1967 by Jocelyn Bell Burnell, who initially thought the regular radio signals might be communications from extraterrestrial intelligence. The signals repeated every 1.3 seconds with clockwork precision, leading to the temporary designation Little Green Men 1, before astronomers realized they were observing a natural phenomenon. Pulsar timing is extraordinarily precise, with some millisecond pulsars keeping time more accurately than atomic clocks. The Crab Pulsar, formed from a supernova observed by Chinese astronomers in 1054, rotates 30 times per second and has been slowing down at a measurable rate since its discovery. Pulsars emit radiation across the entire electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves to gamma rays. The radiation originates from charged particles accelerated along the neutron star's magnetic field lines. As these particles spiral around the magnetic field, they emit synchrotron radiation that forms the characteristic pulsar beams. Over time, Pulsars gradually slow down as they lose rotational energy through electromagnetic radiation. 
Young pulsars rotate rapidly and emit strong radiation, while older pulsars spin more slowly and eventually become too weak to detect. This process typically takes millions to billions of years. Magnetar Magnetars represent the most magnetically powerful objects in the known universe, possessing magnetic fields quadrillions of times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. These exotic neutron stars form when particularly massive stars collapse, and their magnetic fields become amplified to extraordinary levels during the core collapse process. A typical magnetar's magnetic field strength reaches 10 to the 15th gauss, compared to Earth's magnetic field of roughly half a gauss. This magnetic field is so intense it could erase a credit card from 1,000 kilometers away and would be lethal to humans at distances of 1,000 kilometers due to the disruption of nerve impulses. The extreme magnetic field creates a magnetosphere extending thousands of kilometers from the magnetar's surface. Within this region, the magnetic field is strong enough to distort the shape of atoms, stretching them into needle-like configurations. The field also affects the propagation of light, causing photons to split into multiple particles or change polarization. Magnetars experience sudden magnetic field reconfigurations called starquakes, where the neutron star's crust cracks under magnetic stress. These events release enormous amounts of energy in the form of gamma-ray bursts and X-ray flares. A single magnetar flare can release more energy in one-tenth of a second than our sun produces in 100,000 years. The most powerful magnetar flare ever recorded occurred in 2004 from SGR 1806-20, located 50,000 light-years from Earth. This flare temporarily blinded several satellites and caused measurable changes in Earth's upper atmosphere despite the vast distance. The energy release was equivalent to what our Sun produces in 250,000 years. Magnetars have relatively short, active lifespans of approximately 10,000 years before their magnetic fields decay to normal neutron star levels. Only about 30 confirmed magnetars exist in our galaxy, making them among the rarest stellar objects. Black Hole Black holes form when neutron stars exceed approximately three solar masses, the point where even neutron degeneracy pressure cannot resist gravitational collapse. At this threshold, gravity becomes so strong that nothing can prevent the matter from collapsing into a singularity, a point of theoretically infinite density and zero volume. The event horizon defines the boundary around a black hole, beyond which nothing, including light, can escape. The radius of this boundary, called the Schwarzschild radius, depends directly on the black hole's mass. For a black hole with our sun's mass, the event horizon would have a radius of approximately 3 kilometers. Stellar mass black holes typically contain 3 to 20 times the mass of our sun compressed within their event horizons. These objects warp spacetime so severely that time dilation becomes extreme near the event horizon. An outside observer would see objects falling toward the black hole appear to slow down and freeze at the event horizon, while the falling object would experience normal time passage. The singularity at a black hole center represents a breakdown of known physics. General relativity predicts infinite density and curvature of spacetime, but quantum mechanics suggests this description becomes invalid at such extreme scales. The actual nature of matter at the singularity remains one of physics' greatest unsolved mysteries. Black holes can grow by accreting matter from their surroundings or by merging with other black holes. As matter spirals into a black hole, it forms an accretion disk that heats up to millions of degrees, emitting intense X-rays and gamma rays. These emissions make black holes detectable despite their inability to emit light directly. 